follow Sid Roth here with Dr. Gary Wood. And Gary, we're happy today, but in 1966, you're just a young man. You're driving with your sister uh, and you have a crash. What is the first thing you remember after the impact? Well, Sid, there was a sharp searing uh, pain that went through my upper facial features and uh, I, I felt a crushing in my larynx and then I was just relieved of all pain. Dying is just like taking your clothes off and just laying them aside. I stepped out of this body, this earth suit, and then was lifted above the top of my car and uh, my whole life passed before my eyes in just an instant. Then I was caught up in a swirling, massive, funnel-shaped cloud that grew wider and, and very bright, but not as bright as the lights that are shining here in the studio in my face. Angels took me underneath their wings. Now, and, now while this is going on, eventually a paramedic gets to you. Yes. Uh, what did the paramedic find out? Well, they pronounced me dead at the scene of the accident. I've, I've learned uh, that I was dead for over 61 minutes. Oh, okay, now you're caught up in the air. There is no pain. It's was it a good feeling? It, it was ecstasy. It was peaceful, calm, tranquility. And then angels begin to sing. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. And then this cloud opened up, and I saw this gigantic golden satellite suspended in space that the Bible calls heaven. It had 12 foundations, Sid. The names of the 12 apostles were inscribed upon them. It had 12 gates of pearl. And the uh, gates were over 500 miles in width. I started walking up a green grassy hill. The uh, grass came all the way through my feet. Yet there were no indentions where I'd previously stepped. There were diamonds on the grass. There was an angel standing in front of one of those gates of pearl. And it, he was at least, uh, the angel was at least 70 feet tall. But did you say, did you hear that? 70 feet tall? And he that's had, tall. That's <laughs> tall. He had a sword. He had, he had beautiful uh, ghost spun hair. And there was an angel inside of the city that was con holding some books. And there was some exchange between these two angels. And then I was allowed access into the city. And I have to say that I was allowed access into the city because I received Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. Who was the per first person that you met besides the angel? Well, he was my best friend in high school, and he had been killed in an automobile accident. His head was decapitated. I recognized him immediately, which answers in my mind, will we know one another in heaven? And certainly we will. And then my friend began to take me on the tour of the place called heaven. Tell me about the library. That intrigues me. Wait, I saw volumes and volumes of books. There's uh, books of uh, prayer requests, our spiritual growth in the Lord, and uh, souls that we have won to the Lord Jesus Christ because that's the dearest thing to the heart of God. So, so, so let me see if I got this straight. There, there, there's a book. And it has the names of the people that uh, say, you have won to the Lord. Did you look in that book? I did. And I saw people that I had led to the Lord even up to that particular time. And then the most exciting thing, Sid, was to see the Lamb's Book of Life. And there, it, it, it's just covered in wool. It's white wool. And I looked into the Lamb's Book of Life and I saw my name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And it said, paid in full by the precious red blood of Jesus. So I had a right to be there. And uh, I saw what happened when someone received Jesus as their Savior. What transpires is uh, I, I, there's always a welcoming committee when you come to heaven. There's always a celebration and excitement. And uh, I saw a man receive uh, Jesus as Lord and Savior of his life. And uh, there were people watching and looking. They were sitting like in bleachers. It's kind of recorded in Hebrews chapter 12. They're not looking at all the bad things in life, but they're looking at the good things. that, And they're pulling for us. They're cheering for us. They've in essence said, we've run our race, you run your race. And wait, then, wait, wait a second. I, I feel something right now. I feel, I believe, the presence of angels. You have an angel that accompanies you. Is yes. that angel here right now? He is here right now. 
Why is he here? Well, because I'm a man on a mission with a message sent directly from heaven. By the body parts room. Tell me what you saw. About 500 yards from the throne room of God, uh, my friend took me and I was captivated by the sign on the outside that said, Unclaimed Blessings. When I opened the door, to my astonishment, I saw legs hanging there from the wall. I saw real arms, legs, real, real legs. Every part of one's anatomy was there in that room. And uh, people ask me, why do you need a place like that? Because God has a spare part room. God has a miracle. And uh, I saw what happened, Sid, when people on the earth pray. The prayers go up. And uh, Jesus receives that prayer. He commissions, sends out an angel. Angel goes and takes the spare part room, brings it down immediately. Now, sometimes it's instantaneous. Sometimes it's like Daniel, who had to wait 21 days to receive his manifestation. But here's what I saw. I saw people receive their miracle. And then on the other hand, I saw the angel bring the miracle to the person. And the person say something like this. Uh, Well, well, I guess it's just just not uh, my my time. time. But wait a second. Why would they say that if the angel brought it well uh they didn't see it or they may not have been uh you know prepared for that or they may have been taught that god doesn't perform miracles today what i've 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 met a lot of people that have gone to heaven and they have actually witnessed the spiritual warfare of the angel trying to bring the answer prayer and demons interfering well that's exactly what i was saying that demonic forces didn't want the miracle to come to the person but when uh, the person would lift up their hands and the lord really emphasized this to me said to to say in the last six months and this is where we've seen an increase in miracles that when we pray for people to lift up their hands and say i believe i receive because what i saw was but is, but that's simple that that's mark eleven twenty three. it's scripture it is it's so simple it is Faith is simple. Faith is not complex. Faith is not difficult. Faith is just believing the Word of God and acting like it's true. Very briefly, tell me about one person that uh, uh, you prayed for or that heard your story and got a body part. Well, uh, there's a lady named Stacy, and she's from Kokomo, Indiana, and she was believing God for new lungs. She's in the medical profession. She had severe allergies from a young age, and uh, she read that she read that part, and I uh, heard that part in the testimony that I gave, and uh, she said, "I want new lungs." And so she prayed, and she received, and she's totally healed of asthma. And now she tells her patients, I understand how you were, but now I'm completely healed. And it opens up the door for her to share her story as to how God gave her new body parts. Why did you come back? I'm on assignment. I was sent back to tell people that uh, heaven is real. There's a song to sing. There's a missionary journey to take. There's a book to write. You're unique in purpose uh, for this earth. No one can uh, do what you are called and commissioned to do here upon the earth. Jesus told me to give a specific message. He said there'd be a spirit of restoration that would prevail throughout the land. He said that there would be a teaching and emphasis on prayer. And he told me to always pray. It is written. If I possibly could, then I could triumphantly say it is finished. And then number three, he said there'd be a great outburst of miracles. And he said, tell my people never to bind to the condemnation of the devil that they're unworthy. He said, you're worthy because you've been redeemed by the precious blood of the Lamb. And, you know, that is worth applauding. I can tell you this. But he had a sister that didn't even believe in miracles. But when he died, she was crying to God Mm -hmm. in a name that is above even death. In the name of Jesus. And what happened? Well, she began to cry out. And when my friend was taking me on this tour in heaven, uh, as she began to cry out, he said to me, uh, you've got to go back. She's using that name. And so I just shot right back down into my body. They noticed life signs. They rushed me to the hospital to stabilize me. And then uh, I was told the next day the severity of the accident. Oh, I've got a picture here of the x-ray. 
uh, your nose was torn off, your teeth were knocked out, your jaw was broken, your neck was broken, you had a severed vocal cords, you crushed a larynx. Yes. That's kind of an understatement. And you're hearing a song that many of you know. Jesus touched me. Yes. He touched me. Yes. And what happened? Well, when I heard that song, Jesus walked into my hospital room and I looked at him. And he, said, he actually walked in. He actually walked in. And how would you like Jesus to walk into your bedroom? How would you like Jesus to walk into your bedroom? And Sid, this is humorous to me, but people often ask me this question. What, uh, is Jesus Jewish? Yes, he is. Uh, when you die, you're not going to lose your uh, ethnic origin. Jesus had olive skin. He, I saw where they drove the nails in his hands. I saw where they played a crown of thorns upon his head. He had beautiful blue eyes. Jews from the house tribe and lineage of David are known to have blue eyes. And he just walked over, put his hands on my throat. He smiled. And all the time I'm hearing the song sing. He touched me, touched me. And then he just walked out of the room. Now, he didn't come in through the door. He didn't leave by the door. He is the door. And the, the little nurse had been attending me. All right, but, wait, but wait a second. You have to get this clear. Uh, his uh, vocal cords are cut. His larynx is crushed. Uh, you don't have to be a doctor to understand. That means you cannot speak. He was a singer. Uh, he has a doctorate, I believe, in music. Uh, and uh, he would never sing again. He would never speak a word again. The little nurse comes in, and what happens? Well, when she walked in, she said, Good morning, Mr. Wood. How are you this morning? And she was just trying to cheer me up. And I Thank threw my God hands up and said, healed. Praise God, I've been healed. Oh, can you picture that? <laughs> <laughs> And she dropped the tray, Sid, needless to say, and the doctors went out, or she went out and got the doctors. Doctors came in and they said, you can't speak, you can't talk, but I got a second opinion. <laughs> Dr. Jesus said I could, and I've been doing it every day. Every what, day what, 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 what did the, the, uh, the voice therapist say? Uh, she said it's uh, absolutely impossible for, number one, for me to even be alive with the crushed larynx. Because with the crushed larynx, your food will go directly into your lungs instead of into your stomach. And so you'll, you'll drown to death, essentially, uh, or you'll suffer. And you know what? The thing that's so amazing, he can't talk, by the way. <laughs> I want you to know this, <laughs> medically speaking, because his, his vocal cord is still cut. His, uh, his larynx is still crushed. But it's a double miracle if you, if you look at it that way. And the devil tries to knock you out. December of last year, just a few months back, yes. you had cancer. What, did the, what type of cancer and what did the doctor say? Well, it was a, an acute attack of pancreatitis, so it was pancreatic cancer. Is there much and hope for pancreatic? Not really. Not really. I was. I started off with, they gave me a limited time, you know, to survive. And I uh, started off with uh, morphine, just pure morphine, every five hours. It dropped to two hours, and then every 15 minutes as I could just uh, pump it into my body to relieve the pain. But what I did, Sid, I didn't do anything different. But were that, you fearful that you, this was your time to leave? Absolutely not. Because Why? Uh, I'm a man on a mission with a story. Okay. And, <laughs> Well, listen, I've got a story for you right now, and it's truth. If you have a life-threatening disease, and there's a purpose for your life, and you have not fulfilled that purpose, no devil in hell can kick you out. You hear me? Man. Yeah. That's what I learned, Sid. God, God's plan for your life is greater than the devil's plan to destroy you. And I, I stayed in the Word. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. I stayed in faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Now, the, the nurse, the doctors, they all walked in. They all said, Mr. Wood, you have cancer. They gave the negative report. Uh, I chose to believe Jesus God's Word Lord, over that. And then I stayed in joy. And most important, I stayed in fellowship with fellow Christians. I went to my home church, had my pastor and my church and, and uh, all the believers there to lay hands upon me and to pray the prayer of faith and anoint me with oil. And the moment they did, I knew, I knew that I knew I was healed. And I walked back to my seat, turned to my wife and I said, it's done. It's done. You know, that's you. You've been to heaven. You're maybe special, but 
I know better. You serve a special God. Yes. That's what makes him special. Absolutely. That's what makes you special. Amen. We serve a special God. And Amen. Gary said something that was so profound. He said that Jesus told him about when you're prayed for, believe. Explain that exactly. Well, he said, whenever you're prayed for, immediately declare with your mouth, I believe, I receive. And said, ever since I've started urging people to say that, to say, I believe, I receive, I've seen an increase in miracles. Tell me about that person from Korea, very briefly. Well, I was in a church service, and there were some Korean, uh, three people there from Korean origin. I walked back to the young man, and he said, I introduced myself, oh, and I'm he said, well. oh, I know who you are. He said, you're very, very popular in uh, South Korea. And I went, oh, yeah, sure. Something like that, you know. But then I discovered that they watched It's Supernatural with you. And they saw me on a previous program. And they got on my website, flew 21 hours to be in the service to bring their mother who was dying of terminal cancer. And God miraculously healed her in Jesus' name. Okay. Here's what's going to happen right now. Gary is going to release words of knowledge and pray for you. And you are to say, just before he prays, I believe I have already received. I believe I received. Because you're instructed to do that in Mark 11:23. Diverticulitis is being healed right now, and uh, a rotor cut problem in your shoulder is being healed. Eczema, this rash that's all over your body, acid reflex is being touched and healed. People are being healed, see it in their joints right now, and uh, it's like they're being lubricated, and they were very stiff. A thyroid problem is being touched and being healed. You know, I heard this song, uh, He Touched Me, Touched Me. And it's I know something. Sing it. I know that as you sing this, I know that as he sing this, sings this, if you will believe, you will receive. Oh, he touched me. Join me, audience. And oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened. It's happening right now. And now I know He touched me and made me whole. There is such a presence of God in this studio right now. Uh, Gary, God spoke to you about the importance of living a holy life. We don't hear much about that. Why is that even so important right now? Well, he, the Bible, of course, the Word of God says, without holiness, no man will see God. So that's very important. But he said those that will walk in holiness in this last day will uh, be rewarded for that and will walk in the blessings of God. Those that choose not to are going to be exposed. And uh, it's time to discard and abandon anything that's hindering our race with God. Throw it off and uh, run the race to fulfill. Fulfillment. So we can hear Jesus say, well done, thou good and faithful are, servant. Are, are, are you walking in holiness? Are you uh, looking at pornography? Are you involved in the new age, the occult? Are you involved in sex outside of marriage? Are you involved in addictions of any kind? Are you involved in uh, homosexuality? Are you involved in lying? Are you, look, you know if you're involved in sin. Repent means to tell God you're sorry and change your action and turn from your wicked ways and ask Him for the power to overcome. You can't do it yourself. But if you will do your part, if you will repent and believe the blood of Jesus has washed away your sins, then God's going to do His part and give you the ability to walk a holy life and watch the blessings that you're about ready to walk into. 